Hi, I'm Imani McGee Stafford, and today I'm gonna teach you how to rebound. And I'm gonna teach you how to date on the road and how to apply to law school, too. I am a defensive player by nature, probably because it was the only thing I was good at when I first started playing basketball. Like, I grew fast, I was 6'5", but I didn't really learn to control my limbs until like two years ago. So the only thing I could do in high school was rebound and block shots <laughs> until probably like junior year. I don't know, I just enjoy defense. I enjoy like the competition of stopping somebody in front of me. I enjoy being like, nah, you're not gonna score on me. I love it. This is how to be a better rebounder. Step one, positioning is key. The goal is to consistently be between your opponent and the basket. So that means offensively, you're gonna use the swim move. The swim move is using your inside hand on your opponent's inside shoulder to get in front of them. Be sure not to throw people. I get one offensive foul a game from this, but it's worth it. Defensively, boxing out. Boxing out is being in front of your opponent and putting your hands up, your butt low, and making sure that they can't get around you to get the rebound. As soon as the shot goes up, I'm gonna find my man and box out, right? Realistically, the ball won't hit the floor because, you know, we'll be moving around, but it's actually a good thing if the ball hits the floor. That means that the defense is doing their job. Everybody's boxing out. Step two, use two hands. This seems so simple and trivial, but the higher the competition, the more the details matter. So using two hands allows you to control the ball, even when you're getting hit, even when there's contact, and bring it down and make sure you grab it. College coach, she taught me the two hand thing and she used to yell at me and sub me out, make me run if I didn't get the ball with two hands. And it used to annoy the living crap out of me, but my first year in the league, like that was one of the things that separated me in training camp. And it was the details and it pays off as you get better and as you get higher competition. Step three, if you can't grab it, tip it. Being bigger, being more athletic, this is where you use these things. And that's when you tip, when you can't get two hands to the ball, tip it up, tip it to yourself, tip it to a teammate, and keep the ball alive. Step four, chin the ball. Chin the ball literally means bring the ball to your chin hand strong, elbows high and out. This prevents your opponents from trying to rip the ball from you and create space. It also helps the ref see if there's any fouls. So you try to hit the ball with my hand, I'm turning. So you trying to move my, you not trying to get hit in the face by this elbow, right? So that's the point. If I got my elbows out and if she gets hit by the elbow, it's not an offensive foul. It's only a foul if I go like this. If I swing my elbows, it's a foul. If I'm just pivoting with my elbows out, she catches one, stay out my face. Step five, use map. Now, this may sound a little weird, but rebounding is a lot of timing and probability. So knowing where the ball will come out, depending on where the ball is shot. No matter where I shoot the ball, unless I shoot short, realistically shooting from this side, it's gonna go over there. Watch your head. Now your turn. So shoot from that side, always gonna go to this side. So for me, when I'm playing defense, I know how people shoot. I know where people want to shoot. So I'm, I know like this person's a three point shooter. So when she gets in here, I'm not worried about it because she's not going to take the shot. She's going to try to dish it. Or I know that this person is always shooting mid range, no matter where they at. So you see the way that, that ball hit the right rim and rolled left. So just being aware and knowing things and paying attention to the game, you can put yourself in the right position. Growing up, it was just athleticism and being bigger than everybody. And then as I got older, it became much more of a mind game, much more of me being prepared, being in the right position, knowing plays, knowing who shoots when and why, where they're shooting most often. As weird as that sounds, like I'm a very cerebral player and it helps me because I'm always going to be in the right position. I'm always going to beat you to that spot because I know where you're going. How do Life on the road, you're going to get on the team bus. You're gonna go to the airport. I do not play in the NBA, so we go to the airport. You're gonna get on the plane, you're gonna fight for your favorite seat because we also do not fly first class. When you land, go straight to the gym, you got walk through or practice, check into the hotel, and then the next day we'll have game day. If I'm staying the night after the game, I have a date or a nice dinner for one. This is how to date on the road. Step one, get vaxxed. Now, I am weary of the government too. I did not want to get vaxxed, but I was the last person in my family. I hadn't seen my family in over a year. The first shot hurt. The second shot, I was A-OK. -okay. So if you want to be out in these streets, get vaxxed. It's not about you, it's about us all. Step two, get waxed. Fashion Nova said it best, we are vaxxing wax this summer, guys. No one wants a Chewbacca out here. Step three, 
know what you want. Now, this is easier said than done, but the fun part about dating on the road is that you have the pick of the land. You have a boo in every city. Ludacris said you have in every area code. So, ethical non-monogamy. That means you're gonna be open and honest about your practices and what you want. So, if you are six, five and above, with no kids, older than 25, and know how not to tell a lie, call 1-800, I want my kids to be over six feet. Step four, safety first. Is it Lil Wayne that he said use a latex? We're gonna do that, okay? Safe sex, it's too much going on in these streets, let's just stay safe. And we don't want a baby, unless that's what you want, but we don't want that. So, safe sex. Step five, enjoy the process. Dating is an amazing time to get to know yourself and others. You get to know what you want, you get to know what you don't want. Take it easy. Be graceful with yourself and others. Be easy with your heart. But the best part about traveling is that there is no border to your love. Take me somewhere where we can kind of vibe out and like it's also like not high stakes. I'm not like the type of person that won't go Dutch on the first date. I'm completely fine. You won't offend me. But I also don't give people multiple chances. So like if we're going on a date and you flake or you don't communicate, like I'm good. You never have my time ever again. Sorry. Unless somebody died, and even then, I'm probably not gonna give you my time. Sorry. Not sorry, they're still gonna be dead tomorrow. The WNBA put their bubble season together literally like weeks before the start of it. I essentially was just like, oh my God, we're not gonna have a season, what am I gonna do? And I started like figuring out things that I could do instead. Um, and so I applied to go to law school a week before the deadline. And I called my GM and he was just like, that's amazing, we're so proud of you. Like, go do it and come back and we got a spot for you. And like, just that respect kind of propelled me into this and gave me the confidence to go for it, so. This is how to apply to law school in a week. Step one, do your research. What are your goals in going to law school? Before you start down this road, it's important to understand why you wanna do it. Is it to make more money? Is it to affect change? These are things you have to know before you get into this. Step two, register for LSAC, FAFSA, and scholarships. The LSAC is basically the Law School Admission Council. It's essentially the common app for law schools. Here is where you will get your resume, this is where you'll get your transcripts, and all of your recommendation letters in one place. And you will register to take the LSAC. Step three, study. Now it's time to get serious. So in order to pass the LSAT, you need to have tutors, you need to have material, you need to learn the test. This is not about your intelligence. This is about beating the test. Similar to when you took the SAT in high school, same thing, except now we're talking with bigger words and numbers and other things. So I was always kind of naturally smart. Like I was the kid that slept through class in high school and still got a B. So I never really developed quality study habits, which has been kicking my butt in law school. But I have a really big ego, so if I don't finish this degree, like I have to drop off the face of the earth. Step four, probe your network. This is the moment you have to reach out and figure out who's done law school, who knows lawyers, contact past professors, employers you're close to. These people will be resources when it comes to writing letter recommendations. They should be people that have witnessed your work ethic, that believe in you, that know you well enough to pursue you and speak on your behalf, and you'll need at least two. So make sure you contact at least five or six people because most of them won't be able to do it. Step five, personal statement. This is your chance to explain why you deserve this opportunity. This is the chance to be as honest and vulnerable and uniquely you as possible. I decided to go to law school because essentially I just felt like I wanted to do more. When Brett Kavanaugh was confirmed into office and the entire process of his confirmation, it just really was like, wow, because he was accused of sexual assault by somebody who we had historically protected. Um, she was a rich, affluent, educated white woman. And for her not to be, be believed, it just made me think like, what does that mean for women of color? What does that mean for sex workers, for poor women, uneducated women? And I felt like well, America didn't care about women. And I want to figure out how could I really make an impact and change that. I am trying to be a research lawyer. I want to essentially research black women and how policies and laws disproportionately affect us. Instead of asking people to help me and asking people to care about me, I want to be in the room. I want to be a decision maker. And my presence may not change everything overnight, but it's going to be a lot harder to do things that specifically affect people like me while I'm sitting in your face. How to. Hi, I'm Imani McGee Stafford, and thanks for watching How To. Make sure you watch these cool videos and subscribe. Leave a comment below, which one's your favorite? Can't wait to hear from you.